when we abort our children, it's because we want to live our life the way we want to live our life. Remember the slippery voice of the devil. You have college, you'll disappoint your parents, you have all these plans, you're not ready to be a mother. It's out of greed. In the ancient world, in ancient Canaan, before Josiah came and made reforms, there was a giant stone statue, Moloch, the god of war. And every year they would make a sacrifice to this god of war. It was the same sacrifice every year. It was an infant. And they would take this infant and they would slam it down on his stone arms and roll it back through his mouth into the fire so that their lives might be easier. Aren't you so glad we're past those barbaric times when we would ever sacrifice a child so that our life might be easier? When we commit adultery, we want more than one spouse. We want more than that spouse can give us. When we fornicate, we want what is outside of the sacrament. When we lie, we protect our schedule or we make ourselves better. We want people to look at us differently. When we steal, it's obvious. When we covet, we want those things that we do not have. And on and on. I'm not even going to go through the seven deadly sins. Greed is the source of all of that. Why is our country in the, in the situation it is economically? It's greed. Greed is the source of it. Even when they talk about the primaries now, most of the time they talk about how much money the candidates raise. It's about greed. Imagine if we could no longer be greedy. How the people of the world would be supplied. Things would change immediately. And so I think greed is really the source of a lot of things that we do. And what greed is, when you break it down, is never being told no. And we have to be very careful with our children because some of them are growing up saying no, but never being told no. And they will grow up to be spoiled 40, 60, 90 year old adults who have never been told no. And they can't help it because it's the way that they were brought up. We accumulate as much as we can. We want pleasure without consequences. We want gratification always immediately. And so now I want to talk about some of these moral issues through that lens of greed. And the first is abortion. I want to quote to you, it's interesting when these religious figures sometimes get into political circles and you expect them to act all nice and proper and everything, and then they really let one drop on these politicians. And uh, Mother Teresa was in the presence of Bill and Hillary Clinton, and they greeted her and everything else. And so you can imagine she gets up and gives this speech in front of this packed audience. I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion, because it is a war against the child a direct killing of the innocent child, murder by the mother herself. And if we accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? How do we persuade a woman not to have an abortion? As always, we must persuade her with love. And we remind ourselves that love means to be willing to give until it hurts. Jesus gave even his life to us. So the mother who is thinking of abortion should be helped to love, that is to give until it hurts her plans or her free time, to respect the life of her child. The father of the child, whoever he is, must also give until it hurts. By abortion, the mother does not learn to love but kills even her own child to solve her problems. And by abortion, the father is told that he does not have to take any responsibility for the child he has brought into the world. The father is likely to put other women into the same trouble. So abortion just leads to more abortion. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use violence 
to get what they want. Greed. That is why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. If we remember that God loves us and that we can love others as He loves us, then America can become a sign of peace for the world. From here, a sign of care for the weakest of the weak, the unborn child, must go out to the world. If you become a burning light of justice and peace in the world, then really you will be true to what the founders of this country stood for. And then she says, God bless you. If we are a Bible people, we could never support abortion. Jeremiah, the Lord speaks to him and says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Jesus says, lest you touch a hair on the head of one of my little ones, it would be better that a millstone were hung about your neck and you thrown into the sea. And it stresses in the Greek, a donkey's millstone. This is the large one that only donkeys could pull. In other words, he's saying, don't you ever do it. As I said the first night, we never hear Jesus preach on abortion. That's because nobody had the guts to ask him about it. And rightly so. It was a no-brainer. If he is God, an intelligent being never creates without a purpose, ever. Why would he create simply so we could destroy? It makes no sense. So even if you don't believe in Jesus, you believe in God. Even if you don't believe in God, it's natural law. Life wants to live. If given the choice, life wants a chance. It's instinctive in us. There is no question. And I think if you ask most scientists today, they would agree that life begins at conception. Half the DNA is in the sperm, half the information is in the egg, the two go together, a half plus a half makes a whole, that's a person. That's it. We know what happens. And then they create these new laws and they try to push them. Before a woman gets an abortion, she has to have a vaginal ultrasound to see this. But we won't make her look at it. Why? Why are you trying so hard to murder this child? Why is it that at Planned Parenthood, they escort the women in, and as soon as it's done, they kick them out the door and let them go? At least have the decency to walk them out. No, as long as the deed is done, why are they so intent on protecting the right to kill that child, as opposed to being concerned truly about the health of the woman? Because if you look at the psychological statistics, the results last for years, not only the physical. There is no question. With respect to the same-sex union, you could read Leviticus. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And you shall not lie with any beast and defile yourself with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to a beast to lie with it. It is a perversion. Again, we go from Romans. So they were without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man. Therefore God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in their own persons the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a base mind and improper conduct. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the immoral or adulterers, nor adulterers, nor sexual perverts, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards will inherit the kingdom of God. The goyim, the homosexuals, 
or the uh, arsenokoites, the homosexuals. It's important that they know this. This is in scripture. And so when you have openly gay bishops and openly gay churches and they're saying this is okay, how can they do it? How can they do it? Because they do not have the Eucharist. They have a liturgy of the word. Nobody excommunicates themselves because they do not have communion. We do. There was a, a thing that came out here and I, I brought this out about Starbucks, but it applies to a bunch of different companies. Important legislation is a lie uh, aligned with these business practices, upholds their belief in the equal treatment of partners. It is core to who we are and what we value as a company. We are proud of our Pride Alliance Partner Network Group, which is one of the largest employer resource groups for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender employees in the United States, helping to raise awareness about issues in communities where we live and work. Jesus says, when they're talking about divorce, in the beginning it was not so. In his image and likeness he created them, man and woman he created them. The theology is written on their bodies. There's no guesswork here. Man and woman are made complementary so they can go together. And he says, be fertile and multiply. There's no question here. It's a command of God. So that we bear fruit. And who wouldn't want to do this? I mean, if you're thinking on a purely scientific level, so let's take Jesus out of the picture, God out of the picture, your concern as an animal is fitness. How many offspring you can produce with your genes. Why would we want to do that? Because we have the best genes. I got good genes. I want to pass them on to as many offspring as possible so they can have offspring, etc., etc., ad infinitum. So according to nature, that's the purpose. But what do we do? We are one of the only, or the only species I know that actually use artificial means to keep our organs from working as they were created to work. Now I'm not talking about getting your stomach stapled. That's a different situation. But in a normal means, we would not put a balloon in our lungs so that we would only have partial capacity to breathe. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't take out sections of our intestine so that we'd have harder digest. We didn't do it. So we look at our bodies, the theology is there. What is the purpose of our reproductive organs? To reproduce. 